nope. Man, it's like my hands are hollow. Look at that's going. This video is going to be about the dining room. Yeah? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so for the dining room, a lot of people will put it where I have like my couch area, but I wanted to have that as like an entertainment area where we could sit and watch the screen. And dance, you know. Yeah. Brush the teeth today. <laughs> we wanted to utilize the front section of the van, like the cockpit area, since it felt like it was just this thing that would go to waste and you need right. to utilize as much space as you possibly can. That required swivel seats. <clears throat> and mounting a dining table. The swivel seats are pretty straightforward. I just ordered these little attachments that come from a website called Van Upgrades. But once they're here, it's a quick install. Six tapered Allen headset base. I need a T40 socket, five millimeter Allen, six millimeter Allen tape, and some zip ties are optional. All right, first things first. Try to get rid of some of this here. It's a cool spot in the shower, huh? They do tell you to disconnect your battery so that when you're disengage, disengaging your wires, you, you don't trigger your uh, your airbags. Oh, no shit. Yeah. Right here, under your feet. I disconnected the negative. So, like, when you pull them, you don't deploy those. Right. Which don't, don't risk it if things are working correctly. Turns into an injector seat. Yeah. Boom. Slide the seat forward. I had the Allen heads I needed, and it comes with directions. It's really straightforward. They say exactly what you need to pull out. They send you with new bolts to replace it. Um, and they say which tools you need to pull everything out and put it back in. Rear ones are out. Slide it back. Oh, those are at an angle. I didn't have the T40 socket that they recommended, and so I tried to cheat it, and I tried to take Allen no. heads, and I stripped it out. It's oh. so close, come on. This is what I get. I had actually gotten five out of the six bolts out on that passenger <laughs> seat, and I stripped it out on the last one. I had to take a quick break because I was trying to cheat um, on these sockets. They were Kyle's. I had to run to Lowe's. I took my roommate's car so I could just leave this how it was. And I went and picked up, if I can get it out of my pocket, a, a T40. I did everything I could to get it, but it was too late. Because it was stripped out, it didn't matter. I wasn't getting it out. And so I tried the Go. trick of taking like a, a chisel, knocking oh. the side of it, putting a dent into it, and then hammering it out trying to like force it around and it wasn't working so then I got an extractor bit Get and I literally just bored it out and pulled it out. That took me a good hour and a half to do because I wanted to cheat it. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Bullshit. So it's a good idea to have what they're saying you need to. Moral of the story is yeah. just have what they ask for. Can this pick up? Bottom thing. Oh. Oh. Really? No works. Place swivel on the factory seat base. Unlatch the swivels and spin to get access to the tapered holes in the bottom plate. Swivel will contact steel wire on front of seat base. Does not affect operation. Oh. That's how it goes. I got it in and it does raise your seat about an inch and a half. They're not shitting you when they say they're high because my toes are just flat and I'm 5'8". Like, they're almost hanging. That's smooth. I'll get the driver's side in tomorrow. 
they're easy to go in that second time. The first seat, I had that hiccup. The second seat went in within like 30 minutes. I was boom, 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 boom. With my driver's seat, you can adjust the lumbar support so you could sink a little lower into your seat oh, wow. okay. and <clears throat> compensate for that difference in height. But the passenger seat, you definitely feel like you're in a high chair, kind of like what we're in now. Mm, it feels good. really high. So if you're a taller person, it's gonna push your head up or, like closer to the ceiling, you're gonna be looking more down. I would like suggest that. you live in the van if you're a taller person anyways. So. <laughs> that's a, that's true. Damn yeah, behind. how tall are you? 6'1". Damn you and you him. can't stand Damn in there. But hey, at six feet. Now you can only imagine. <laughs> you can only imagine this guy living. Yeah, right. Get his knees done. Your head is out of frame <laughs> for sure. You have a table there. Yeah, I mean, just one, like a, a one single post. Yeah, yeah, that wouldn't be bad. What? Did we just become best friends? Yup. And for the dining table, um, once we had the seats in there, we could take a measurement of like, okay, this is gonna be a good yeah, size. Yeah, right. and so I whipped up like just a piece of plywood again, maybe 17 by like 20. It was just big enough to fit like a laptop on or if you wanted to eat with two people there. And I always wanted to be able to make that table out of used skateboards. And when I first tried it, I couldn't really do it. I had no experience with pouring epoxy or you know cutting the sizes out correctly and making it into something usable. So I had to reach out to some people for help and I had found this guy uh, named Guy. He has a, a YouTube channel actually, it's called Guy's Wood Shop and he was in the area. And so I contacted him and discussed with him like, well, I don't really have money. Is there any way we could do like a work for trade type of deal? And he said, yeah, sure. If you could film some of my products that I'm creating coming up, I'll do this woodworking for you. And the deal was to do, you know, X amount of videos to have him create the dining table as well as the kitchen countertop. Yeah. And he agreed to it. He said like, this isn't typically what I do. I do more of like fine, woodworking with veneering and things like that, but he was willing to try it. And so I mocked up a dining table. We mocked up this kitchen framework thing to just give an idea of the kind of counter space we needed. And I went over there. I'm on my way to Guy's house. I'm gonna have him check out what I've got. He'll take some measurements. We can discuss how many. This is what it sounds like to drive in a van with a bunch of framework and loose appliances. We'll get his measurements, see what he thinks about it all. And we spent a couple hours measuring, discussing how it would look, how it would work, how many skateboards I would need, and the amount of epoxy and how that would all transpire. Once we figured that all out, I had to go to the skate shop and because I knew them over there and I'd noticed, you know, a lot of times they just have to get rid of old skateboards, they're willing to just give them to you. So I got a big box of skateboards for free and then I had to get all the grip tape off of them, which is a serious pain in the butt to pull grip tape off of skateboards. No, it was going so good. Boom. One down. I did eventually come up with a method of taking like a dowel rod, heating it up with a heat gun, and then rolling it so that the tension on the grip tape was dispersed evenly and it wouldn't break on you. That's the thing out of the box. Yeah, because it's brittle. I'm on my way to Guy's house now. We're gonna pull the skateboards out. See what we got going. Hopefully he has had like time to put a jig together to whip these pieces out into matching shapes and sizes. <laughs> and then the idea is to get everything cut, placed into a frame, and I don't know if he got the epoxy here. Help my hair. Good. <laughs> Guy put together this jig, which, I don't know, what did that take? Would you have to take some measurements, some math, some... Yeah, just a little bit of math, and I had to cut it at the right angle. But these are about one inch wide this way. So we're gonna cut the, the, the boards in the strips one inch wide, and then we're gonna take it and put it on here, and it's actually gonna cut these angles to make these diamond patterns. It's gonna give us our shape. And so you can see the whole 
uh, countertop is going to be comprised of several small little pieces that can be placed together in these shapes of three. Once those are all cut, we'll take those and put them into a frame that we've got to whip together out of uh, gluing them to MDF board. And those will just be placed with hot glue. So what are we cutting down here now? This is the MDF. This is the substrate that all those pieces are gonna get glued to. Okay. If we throw an orange with a green and then a... It, it depends on what book you're, you're, you're Or do we do like... I think... If we just... Do random colors and pay attention to it, but not overly sweat it. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. That first day, it took us like six to eight hours just to get the table, the little dining table, in place, and we didn't even pour epoxy or anything like that. We had just okay. cut out the Watch little the pieces water. with the jig he yep. made and put them into place, and it was just, it took forever. And so then, he went and poured the epoxy on his own time, and it just went awry. You know, he couldn't really work in his shop because he didn't want to get sawdust into the epoxy, and you have to get the bubbles out of it, and there was bubbles in it, and da 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 da. It was just a huge headache, a lot more work than he expected, and so when I went back over there to pick it up, he basically said, We're done. Yeah. We tried it. I'm sorry it didn't pan out how we had expected it to, but this just took up too much of my time too much of my resources and the trade-off isn't going to be worth it and I'm not proud of what I've made here so here you go handshake and then that's it I didn't owe him any video work I didn't he just cut it there and that was all so good man thanks guy for yeah. trying that with me good and uh, giving it a shot but uh, I thought it turned out great It looks awesome and it feels great. You know, there are these little bubbles in it and or these little bumps and divots, but I think it's really cool. The idea is to take this table, mount it between these seats right there. And I think it's like the perfect size. We had to have a place to mount it. And that's where I ordered this like pole with a mounting bracket with the flush okay. mounting <clears throat> panel. Now, Putting it between the seats posed an issue because in between the seats and where your feet go, there's a couple things underneath there and it's covered with a foam pad. Right under there's the gas tank. Remember there's yeah, the that's gas. That's right, and you have to be able to get to the port in yeah. case you have to replace the gas. Right, so we couldn't drill pump. and mount it into the actual frame we of the van. We had to bridge over it. Yeah. You can offset your mount a little this bit. This is so what you got to do. Okay, it comes up, it's mounted here, it comes over this way, mm. and I'll put a stiffener down there, and it won't be a springboard. I want you to make a template of it. Then I'll make it out of steel. And you can walk on it, and it won't be in your way, and you can pull four bolts out, pull the whole thing up out of the way, so you can get to the gas tank. Mm. That's what it's all about. And that's what it's all about. And so what you ended up making was basically like an L piece Out of, of uh, 516 metal. Like so, with just wood covering it. And the table mount. So basically this provides a separate mounting plate for the base of the dining table so that we're not gonna have to mount directly to the frame of the van. And then this is my flooring that I'm gonna use throughout the van. It's this bamboo floor that we got for $8. And so the actual flush mount is mounted to the bamboo flooring, which is then the bamboo, did we just glue it? Yeah. 
we, we used, uh, which hit up, we got them all together. Right. Because it's tongue and groove. Yeah. We and then all we the glued it down. Yeah. All right. So the table, table base mount is in place. This indentation goes into this um, foam pad. They all have this like two inch thick foam that then goes in between these access points for the fuel and the battery. And so this kind of provides a brace so that you don't have to mount anything to that foam or cut excess foam out. And then this covers up the hole that we had to cut out to get this indentation in there flush. And then this is gonna mount straight to the frame metal of the van itself with these inch long self-tapping screws. Okay, so here is the table arm that then gets placed into this base mount like that and now I need to drill this on screw it on I mean but once that's on there we'll pop it in so now I have this platform that's in between the seats and it's almost it's pretty much flush up against the seats themselves but then the post sits in the center of that and then it just it right. sits down so on there remove the center post so it's all when you it's can all, pull things yeah, apart removable <laughs> it's all yeah you can store it away i put it all behind my driver's seat so that when we're not dining or like hanging out it doesn't have to be in the way oh the table leg itself is 29 and a half inches is that like the average height of a table you guys 30 is standard 30 is standard that makes sense, because yeah. then you like, when you set it in and you place it on. And I do use that table, I do use that space. I eat dinner there every night. I do work on a laptop there. I think it was one of the better decisions to make the dining room there, because we saved a ton of space. It really opens up the whole yeah. room right. within the, the van. It kind of adds an entire different section. That's uh, a wrap. Don't kick the mics. That's really it for the dining area. It was a pretty straightforward process. You could probably make it a ton easier if you don't try to make a custom table with skateboards and have to epoxy the whole thing. Um, and again, we did this custom bracket, which a lot of you probably won't be able to do. Hey, what would you suggest? Uh, give me a holler and I'll make one up for you. <laughs> okay, there you go. Or we so, can make you a drawing. Yeah, okay. I mean, you and, guys might be able to come uh, up with something. Take it to a metal fabricator or a machine shop and have them make it up for you. Yeah, so there's, I think there's easier ways to do it, but it wasn't that hard and it saves a bunch of space and it's uh, very useful. Yeah, so very neat. That's it. Dining right. room, done. Again, subscribe, like, share, bell, do the thing. And we'll talk about the next room in the next video next time. And that's when Gregory, the guy who stood in here and his head was out of frame, right. will be in. He thinks his head belongs in a frame. <laughs> and this way you hit the cruise control, then you turn your chairs both towards the table and eat and let the Work on your computer. Right. Yeah, yeah. let the van take you wherever it's <laughs> got to take you. Yeah.